Hey, it's Christopher McMahon from Motion McMahon Fitness, and today we're going to be working on a stretch routine that I like to call Netflix and stretch. So all you're going to need for today is a yoga block. If you don't have a yoga block, it's completely fine because you can use a rolled up towel or a pillow too. So let's get into it. When I stretch, I always wanna make sure that I'm warm. Uh, cold flexibility is cool, but if we're warm, we have an easier time with it. So the first position we're going to start with is this tabletop position. We're going to start with our wrists directly under the shoulder, our knees directly under our hips. From here, we are going to perform some cat cows. So if you've never done them before, we're going to push away from the ground, make that nice arch, 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 slow, slow and controlled, push away from the ground. From here, we're going to send our tailbone up towards the sky, unwind, create length. Nice, good job. And repeat. Now as you work through this, think about what's going on in your body. Where am I tightest? Am I skipping areas? Do I have the ability to control each section of my spine and untuck? Tuck. Wait. Untuck. Good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sit back onto our heels. From here, we're going to keep pushing away from the ground and keep that tucked position. Now we're going to tilt our hips so our butt travels back. We're going to create that same length. We're dropping everything down. Pull the shoulder blades down. Pull the ground apart with your hands. Create that length. Lift, 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 lift. Last thing to move. Next, slightly up towards the sky. Good. Push away from the ground. Pull those shoulder blades up as you pull away. As you push away, spread the ground. Tuck those hips. Tuck. One more time. Push away. Push away, excellent. Spread the ground, pull those shoulder blades down. And one more time as we return back. Cool, and for the next couple seconds, you're just gonna play around with that, see what you can find. You can follow me or not. Go at your own tempo. and shake it out. Great. So now what we're going to work on is we're going to do some uh, lat stretching. Yes, we're going to stretch out the lats. So the way we're going to set up for this, I'm going to face the camera so you can see, we're going to have our hands in front. We're going to be in that same quadruped position. But now what we're going to do is we're going to move our right hand and we're going to move it closer to our left. Right? That's the only difference in this position. And what we're going to do from here is we're going to sink our hips back. And as we sink our hips back, we're going to push away from the ground on that right side. Right? So I sink back, push away, push away. It's almost as if I'm trying to close my left shoulder towards my left hip. So one more time, push away. Right? And that creates a nice stretch through that lat. If you're tight there, if you want to increase the stretch, make sure that you're pushing through the arms as much as you can. And that's really going to engage the lat, forcing you to move those scaps to get a bigger stretch. And you can do anywhere between 10 and 15 of these. And on your last one, shake it out. Good. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So, so you have another view. Left hand is moving closer to that right. And we're going to arch we push through. Nice and controlled. Drive that arm into the ground. Create that length. Keep it going. Keep it going. One more. Good. Stretch it out. Shake it out. Shake it out. Shake it out. Excellent. Now what we are going to do is possibly my favorite thing we're gonna do some spinal circles. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to get in that same quadruped position and we're going to push away from the ground as much as we can. Great, 
From here, we're going to drop down as much as we can. Notice that my arms are still straight. So we got that cat-cow position going. And we're gonna push up again and push down again. And then we're gonna find neutral, right in the middle. From here, remember that lat stretch we just did? Same idea. We're going to pull that tailbone to one side, pull that tailbone to the other side. And now we're gonna put it all together. So we're going to come up to the side, lat stretch, down, to the other side, and up. And we're gonna keep going. In this case, we're going towards our right, or we're going clockwise. Now, the interesting thing here is you wanna try and create a nice big circle as if I was tracing a circle. Now, you may find that it's really hard for you to do this because your motor control isn't quite there, and that's okay. Just make a mental note of that. My motor control is off today, right? The other thing is we wanna make sure that our arms are staying straight the whole time and that we're not moving all over the place, right? There's a time and a place for that, but not right now. We're gonna switch directions now. We're gonna go counterclockwise. I always like this because I feel it right in the middle of my back, right along the T-spine. I do these in like my morning stretches if I stretch in the morning because it just clears off all the cobwebs, right? And one more. Good. Now our final prep movement we're going to use is the spinal wave. You might have done this before. If not, it's a great movement. So the way we're going to do it, we're going to sit our butts back. You can sit back as far as you can comfortably. From here, you're going to shift your weight forward. Get those hips down. Create that long line. Now here's the deal. I feel the stretch where my hip flexors are. I feel the stretch in my upper back and in my shoulder blades. I do not feel stretch or pain in my lumbar because we want to avoid that. Now the way I avoid that is I make sure that as I bring my weight forward, I'm squeezing my butt. I'm looking up. If you relax the butt, now all the weight's in my lower back. That doesn't feel very good, right? So squeeze the butt. And again, everyone's going to be different with this. I, I do have a flexible lower back, so, you know, it's okay if your body doesn't look like that when you go into this position. There was a time where this was probably the range of motion I had, so. Everything comes with practice. Everything comes with time. And we're going to do one more. Great. So now we're going to get set up for the next part of our class. We are going to be focusing on the back or the T-spine. And the movement we're going to be using first is the Cobra. I love this position. So let's go over the setup. So for the Cobra, we're gonna first start with our head flat on the ground, our legs a little wider than hip distance apart. We're going to take our elbows, we're gonna move them a little further forward, okay? And from here, all we're gonna do is look up. The reason I like starting in this position is because I'm not borrowing any flexibility from my lower back, right? Like I mentioned earlier, I have a flexible lower back it was easy for me to cram into different positions like this. So I wanna make sure that no one has any pinching in the lower back. If you feel comfortable here, we're going to now slide the elbows in a little closer. Now notice, everything's still coming from my upper back. I'm not doing this, I'm not jamming myself into a position, right? Yes, this doesn't bother me, but it's also just really messing with my lumbar, so I don't wanna be there. So keep those elbows down, right? And from here, create a nice long line as if there was a string attached to the top of your head connecting you to the wall. And this is your starting position, okay? And all we're gonna do is kinda hang out here for a couple seconds, get the feel for it, what's going on in my body. This feels pretty comfortable. Am I able to relax my glutes? Can my legs stay open? I feel pretty good here. So about after 30 seconds to a minute, we're gonna perform our first movement. So what we're going to do 
is we are going to take our elbows and our hands and we are going to drive them into the ground. Now we're driving as if, as if I'm trying to push my body up, but the thing is my body's not going anywhere, right? So I'm driving, I'm driving those elbows into the ground. Now the next step is we're going to drive outward as if we're trying to spread the ground apart. Yeah, so I'm gonna drive and spread the ground apart. Now if we were to look at this on a scale, we're starting off pretty easy. Nothing's going on, it's about a 10%. We're ramping up a little bit, yeah? Now I'm gonna drive a little more. About a 30%. Like if I was pushing my arms into the ground, I would leave a little imprint of my elbow and my hands as I spread apart, right? We're going to ramp up a little more. We're going to drive even more through those elbows. And we're going to spread the ground apart. Now my elbows are going to leave a dent in the ground. I'm going to try and spread a hole <laughs> into the earth. I'm trying to split everything apart. Now I'm going to squeeze my legs. I'm going to brace my core. I'm still keeping a long spine. I'm still trying to spread. Now we're up at 80%. And we're going to hold this position. Hold that 80%. Drive. We got 15 seconds, hold, hold, drive apart, drive apart, drive apart, drive apart, drive apart. And now we are going to, almost as if we were trying to lift our body up, we're going to create length. We're going to create length. We're, it, we're almost pulling those elbows back towards us. We're creating length. That string is attached to the wall and it's pulling us long. And at the same time as pulling us long, we're also raising our chest up. But notice how my body hasn't really moved. But what I do feel, I have a little bit of cramping in my mid spine, right? In that T spine. And that's what we want. Keep holding, keep holding, keep holding. And breathe. And now we have a little bit more of a range of motion. My lumbar still isn't being used. And now we're going to use dynamic contractions. Okay? We're going to do we're going to do three sets. So what we're going to do from here, the dynamic contraction is that same idea of what we just did with those major contractions. The same movement pattern. So from here, we drive those elbows into the ground, we create a long spine and we pull ourselves tall and back down. Pull the shoulder blades down, lift up and back down. Eight more up, down. Seven, down, six, down, five. I'm gonna over-exaggerate so you can see the movement. Three, two, one. Hold that new range of motion. Breathe into it. We're gonna hold up for 20 seconds. Fantastic, and let's go for another set of contractions. So we come down, pull ourselves long. All of the motion is coming from that T-spine. It's not coming from my lumbar, right? It's coming from my upper back. So depending on your level of flexibility, you're gonna have to adjust where your arms are. If you're tight in the upper back and you can't get into that position, you can be here, right? This is a great stretch position. Got three more. One, create that length, lift through that T-spine, lift through that string. Excellent. Hold that position, we're gonna hold it for 30 seconds. Good. Now, depending on where you are, Right? For me, I'm feeling good. My, my upper back is feeling, feeling pretty loose today, so I'm gonna move my elbows a little closer to my body. Right? My elbows can be here almost at a 90 degree angle, but if and only if I'm not borrowing from my lower back. So I might move them just a little bit. And we're gonna have those, those same dynamic contractions. So we're gonna pull ourselves up. Pull. As if I'm trying to drag my elbows back towards my feet. 
seven more. Two, last one, drive up, create that length, create that length. Keep, keep getting longer, keep getting longer. Lift through that spine. Squeeze those vertebrae as you lift through the spine. Three, two, one. Relax into that new range of motion, but we're still gonna stay in this position. We're gonna stay in this position for up to a minute. Keep holding. Now, if a minute's too long for you and you're cramping or it's, or it's a little too intense, back off. 25 seconds, 30 seconds, that's more than enough. 30 seconds to a minute is maximum. We don't want to go any longer than that, right? I'm feeling good right now. I'm going to slowly come out of it. The way I'm going to come out of it is I'm going to Relax those shoulders, turn the hands out, bring my head down. Roll your side to pick yourself back up. Now that we've gone through the cobra, give yourself a second. Feel that spine and we are going to partner it with the three-point bridge. To set up for the three-point bridge, we're going to have our feet shoulder width apart. We're going to place our hands so they're to our sides. And all we're going to do is we're going to drive our hips up. Hips up, nice and high. Yeah? Now if you can get into that position without any issues, fantastic. If you can't get very high, this is perfect. This is great too. Just make sure you're lifting through that chest. We want to use that new range of motion that we just opened up, right, with our Cobra. So from here, if you can hold that first position, we're going to turn the hand back slightly. We're going to come up and bring one arm across. We're going to hold, make sure that your weight is shifted back over that arm so you have a nice support system. Keep lifting those hips up and back down. Switch sides, place the hands down, push through the arm, lift up, shift the weight back. Now here's the other thing. If this is way too intense for you, keep the other hand on the ground stay in this position, right? If you feel comfortable with the previous progression, now we're gonna be here, here, reach up. Slow and controlled, come back down. This feels great for me, I feel it through my chest, I feel it through my upper back. My hips are starting to loosen up a bit too, shift back, keep that arm straight, open up, bring it back down. We're gonna come across. Bring it back down. Up here. Reach, 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 reach. Back down. Across. Reach, 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 reach. Back down. Reach, 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 reach. Up. One more on each side. Down, up, and down. Bring the other hand down. Nice work. By putting the new range of motion into motion, you're going to have an easier time remembering or learning that position within your body. So we looked at the Cobra, now we're going to look at the mid thorax rotation. So, some of us has done this before. If not, you're gonna like it. So, we wanna have straight legs. We're going to bend one foot and plant it on the ground. Now, the way we're gonna set up for this, the big goal is to make sure that our back is staying nice and tall. So if you have your legs set up too close, you might round. We wanna avoid that. So bring that leg out as far as you need to so that you can maintain that tall spine. We're also going to flex the opposite leg, flex the foot, keep everything tight. I keep my tall spine, I'm going to place one hand on the ground, far enough back that I can rotate, right? All that rotation is coming through my T-spine. I'm going to take the other arm, place it across the front. Now we've all probably done some variation of the stretch before. But the important thing here, again, is that we're keeping a tall spine, 
I have that rotation coming from my T-spine. I'm not rounded, right? I'm not rounded over and just relaxing. No, I want to be tall in this position. Now we're going to do the same kind of uh, contraction that we did to start off with the cobra position. So what we're going to do is I'm going to push this arm into the ground, my supporting arm. I'm going to flex that foot. I'm going to bring air into my belly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive the elbow into my leg. I'm going to drive my leg into my elbow. It's very active. I'm going to ramp up. So let's ramp it up. You know your body now. Let's ramp it up to about a 50%. So everything might start to shake a little bit. Drive that into the ground. Flex that opposite leg. Let's take it up to 80%. Now drive. Don't let that leg cave in. Keep pushing the leg out as you drive with your elbow. Keep driving. Keep driving. Three, two, one. Now as if you were going to pull that arm off, but you're not going to. You're going to create that length. You're going to rotate, but you're not really moving. It feels like you are though. Keep holding that position. Rotate. Rotate open a little more, but keep that arm there. Don't let it go anywhere. Hold. Pull that shoulder blade back. Pull that supporting arm shoulder blade back and down. Pull the shoulder blade back and down for that arm that's across the leg. Hold. Three, two, one, and relax. Deep belly breath. That's a tough one. I always feel it in my mid-back. It always has me cramp up a little bit. We're going to relax here. Now we're going to perform dynamic contractions. To perform these dynamic contractions, it's the same idea. We're going to bring our body forward. And we're going to pull ourselves into that rotation. The way we pull ourselves into this rotation is by pulling the shoulder blades back in together and driving that arm into the leg. So again, we're going to do 10 of these. This is five. Four, three, keep that spine long, two, keep that spine long, one, and hold that position, hold that new range of motion, keep that leg tall, long, keep your spine tall and long, breathe, if you feel comfortable you can move that leg a little closer, right, as long as that lower back stays nice and long. And again, we're going to go for another set. So pull yourself into rotation as you pull that shoulder blade back. Pull it back, squeeze it together, keep that tall spine. Keep going. Keep going. Last one, pull, hold that new position. Lift that spine taller. We're gonna hold this one for up to 30 seconds. How's it feel? Is your breathing restricted? Do you feel more open than normal? How are you feeling? Is your breathing restricted? Are you able to pull those shoulder blades back? All right, and we're gonna go for our last set now. So again, dynamic contract. One, two, pull those shoulder blades together. Three, four, you have it. Last one, pull yourself into that new range of motion. See if you can squeeze the shoulder blade so much that your arm almost leaves the leg, right? Almost light, light as can be on that leg. Pull that rotation, pull it, hold. Five, four, three, two, one. Relax into that new range of motion, tall spine. We're gonna hold this position and hold it for up to a minute. Again, 30 seconds might be more than enough. Maybe two sets was more than enough for you. That's completely fine. And 
to come out of the position, you're going to push that arm into that leg. Slowly place the arm down. And slowly come out of it. Shake it out a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna work on the other side. Same setup as before. We have one leg flexed, the other leg bent. You wanna make sure that that toes are pointed up towards the sky and that your leg is as far as you need it so you can have that other arm placed on the ground and so your lower back is nice and long. We don't wanna have a rounded back. If it's rounded, it might just mean your leg's a little too close right now. So again, having it down as far as you need to. The other arm will come across the body and now we're in our starting position and we're just gonna relax here for a second. Kind of get a feel for it. Can I move my arm and squeeze that shoulder blade of the supporting arm so I have that nice, you know, a little bit of extra tension into that opposite arm that's across the knee. Can I breathe? Is my lower back straight? Uh-oh, I just straightened my lower back and now my mid back is a little tighter. That's okay. From here, we're going to ramp up. You know how to do that now. So you're gonna drive that arm into the leg, drive the leg into the arm so you have that tension. And we're gonna go up to that 80% mark again. You know how to get there. So drive, drive, squeeze everything tight, squeeze everything tight, squeeze those shoulder blades together as much as you can. Breathe, keep driving. Another five, four, three, two, one. Now you're gonna squeeze those shoulder blades together and try and rotate forward without taking the arm, right? You're not actually moving anywhere, but you're squeezing all of that tissue. You're squeezing those shoulder blades together. You're keeping the tall spine. And hold. Three, two, one. Good. Deep belly breath. Exhale. And now we're ready for our dynamic contractions. So again, pulling those shoulder blades together, returning. Pull, return. Don't let that leg move as you drive the elbow into it. Going for 10 of these. Are you keeping that tall spine? Are you able to rotate? Three, two, one. Hold that new range of motion. Hold in that new range of motion. And again, I'm gonna hold up to 20 seconds, 15 to 20 seconds. How's this side feeling? For me, this side is much harder than the right side. Rotating to the left. It's always tough. And again, dynamic contractions, rotate. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Rotate. Move into that new range of motion. We'll hold this position for up to 30 seconds. Now make sure all of your rotation is coming from that mid spine, that T spine, that you're not really rotating through that lower back because that's locked into place. You want to imagine that if you were Batman, your Batman emblem or the bat would be where that rotation is generating from. Now we held the last set of dynamic contractions. Reach across, pull yourself back, pull across. My bat signal is coming across. Eight, nine, tenth one. Hold that new range of motion. Pull yourself in a little further. Squeeze those shoulder blades together. Tall spine. And we're gonna hold this for up to one minute. Again, listen to your body. I'm pretty sore right now, so it's gonna be, be tough holding this for a minute. 
And if I need to dial things back, it's completely all right. It's okay to do that. Keep breathing, keep holding that position. And now we're gonna just slide that hand down, place it on the ground, extend the legs, slowly come back center. It's really important that you're slow with that because we are working with the spine. We don't wanna rush through anything, right? Take your time. Now we're just going to do another variation of the three-point bridge. We're gonna set up the exact same way. Hands facing almost back, not quite all the way. Feet hip width apart. From here, we're going to come up into our bridge. Arm, and instead of reaching back, we're going to reach across. Now here's the thing, as we reach across, we wanna try and keep the hips level. I don't wanna do this. I wanna keep my hips level and have all of that rotation come from where? That's right, the T-spine. <laughs> Bring that arm back down. Place the hand down, come up, reach across. Create that length, keep that arm straight, hips up towards the sky. Good, bring that arm back down. Create that length across. Bring that arm back down. Across. that arm back down. How's it feeling? One more on each side. Cool, give yourself a second, shake it out. Okay, so the last movement we're going to use is going to allow us to express the full range of motion of our T-spine, which we've been working on a lot the last few exercises. So to set up for this, we're going to make sure that our wrists are under our shoulders, our knees are directly under our hips. From here, we're going to push up into that A-frame Good, create that length. I'm feeling pretty loose through my upper back, yeah? Once you get comfortable with this position, what we're going to do is lift the heels, shift your weight forward, shift forward, drop the hips down, find that T-spine position like we did for the spinal wave, right? Now here's the thing. Again, my lower back's pretty flexible. I don't have to move my feet, but if you have to adjust your feet back for any reason, that's okay, right? So I just moved my feet. And we're gonna come back up. That was one, we're gonna slow. We're gonna go for 10, slow. It's two, push yourself back up. Six. Seven. Eight. How slow can you on these last two? 
How slow can he go? Nine. Push your butt up. Last one. We get the best one. That was a great job. Now, grab a drink of water. We're gonna move on to the next set of exercises. So let's take a look at the modified pigeon. It's going to change your life. So I wanna bring that front leg so my knee is in contact with the ground. If you can't get your knee towards the ground, you might wanna roll up some towel, put it underneath, or take a pillow and put it underneath. Now I'm at this 90 degree angle, I have my foot flexed and my ankle is in contact, my knee's in contact with the ground. My back leg, I wanna make sure that that is also at a 90 degree position. So I have that 90 degree position, right? Now, the reason I have my trail leg in is because it allows me to focus more on the front leg if I don't have the flexibility. Just so you have that in the back of your mind. I'm pretty comfortable with this, so I'm going to open up to my 90 degree position. So my modified pigeon that I'm doing. The next thing we're going to use is we're going to take that yoga block. The yoga block is going to give us feedback. It's going to allow us to know if we're moving in the right direction. I'm going to place that yoga block on my thigh so my belly button can touch it, right? And I'm going to place my left hand on that ankle. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep a nice tall spine and I'm going to push my butt back as much as I can with my hands on the ground. And my goal is to drive my knee into the ground while also, you know, keeping contact with this yoga block so I can't pull it away. So I'm going to drive that knee into the ground. Just like we've been doing with all the other stretches, we're going to ramp up. We're going to work our way up to 80%. So drive your knee down into the ground. Drive that ankle down into the ground. Keep a nice tall spine. Drive as much as you can. I want you to squish the ground. I want you to leave your imprint in the ground. I want you to put your knee through the floor. Push, push, keep that tall spine, keep driving. Now trap the air in your belly. Flex that back leg, drive that back leg into the ground. Keep driving, drive, drive, drive. And now what you're going to do is you are going to pick that leg up almost off the ground. You're going to squeeze your belly button into the yoga block by sending your hips back and hinge at the hips. Squeeze, hinge at the hips, hinge at the hips, squeeze, push that butt back, push it back, keep that nice tall spine. Squeeze, three, two, one, and relax in that new range of motion. Now we're going to take the yoga block away. It's a nice way to have some feedback. Now you'll see, I've shifted my weight forward. This is the range of motion we're going to use. And from this position, we're gonna still keep that long spine. And when we perform our dynamic contractions, the dynamic contractions that we're using, we are going to tilt the belly button forward as we push our hips back, drive our knee into the ground to return to that starting position. So forward, one, knee into the ground, up, two. Forward, up. Four, keep that tall spine the entire time. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Last one, 10. You're gonna allow your weight to come forward. Try and pick this leg up off the ground again. Try and push those hips back as much as you can. Let the belly button tilt forward. Squeeze everything tight. Imagine that yoga block is there and you're trying to squeeze it between the belly button and the thigh. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Deep breath in and relax. Now for this last one, what we're going to do, we're going to take that hand, move it to the outside, a little further outside. We're going to take that other hand and we're going to bring it across. So now we've internally rotated a little bit more. This rotation is going to be a big deal because with this rotation, now we're going to have even more going into this leg. So again, keeping that nice tall spine, shift the weight forward. 
drive it back, forward, back, 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 last one, back, pull yourself deeper into that stretch, pull, 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 pull. Pull, drive that knee into the ground. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Lift that knee off the ground. Squeeze the belly button. Push the butt back. And hold that new range of motion. The further away your hands are, the harder it becomes. Walk yourself back up. And now we're gonna switch sides. Ooh. Be careful that you don't cramp up too much, but if you do cramp, it's okay. It happens to the best of us. So again, we're gonna place that yoga block on the thigh. Shift that weight as far forward as you can while maintaining a long spine. Find your particular range of motion. Again, everyone's going to be different. And we're gonna start to ramp up now, we're gonna drive that knee into the ground, drive the ankle into the ground. Push, drive, 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 drive. Good, keep ramping up. We're gonna go for 80%, yeah? Drive, drive that knee down into the ground, good. Good, keep driving that knee down into the ground. I want you to leave an imprint in the ground. I want you to drive your leg through the ground. Everything might be shaking now because you're pushing as hard as you can and that's okay. Squeeze your butt. Drive that knee down into the crowd. Squeeze your butt. Drive the back leg into the ground. Hold. Three, two, one. Try and lift that leg off the ground. Lift that front leg off the ground as you tilt forward by pushing your butt back. Push that butt back. Allow the belly button to tilt forward. Squeeze that yoga block between the thigh and your belly button. Squeeze the yoga block. Squeeze it. Shouldn't be able to pull it away. Squeeze. 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 Three, two, one, and relax. I'm gonna take the yoga block away. Hold that range of motion. Right. And we're gonna perform those dynamic contractions now. So, drive up. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Pull yourself deeper into that stretch. Pull yourself deeper into your stretch. Pull, 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 pull. Pull as if that yoga block is still there. Pull, pull yourself in. Drive those hips back. Keep a long spine, right? We don't want any of this. That's great, but you're not really using the proper range of motion. It's tall spine, squeeze, drive the hips back. Good, and hold that position. And once again, like before, we're going to now, for this next one, take the hand across the body, other hand across the body, shift that weight over the knee. You're definitely gonna feel it in your hip now. You're gonna feel it right in your glute, right in your butt. And again, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. Back, forward, back, forward, back, two, one. Pull yourself in, squeeze that imaginary yoga block. Pull, 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 pull. Squeeze the butt in the back, tilt through those hips. Create that length, tilt those hips. Create that length, pull yourself in and hold. Breathe. Breathe, it makes a big difference. Keep that long spine, breathe. To come out of the stretch, drive your knees into the ground, come back up, sit up nice and tall. And what we're gonna do now, we're gonna explore this range of motion. We're just gonna do some windshield wipers, hands on the ground, nice and easy. Open up and close, hands on the ground. Been up and close. Use that range of motion. 
All right. Use it. Maybe you find the opposite side, right? That leg that's bent in right now, internally rotated, that's pretty intense. External rotation feels good though right now. Just make a mental note of it. Take your time. If you are up for an extra challenge, keep those arms in front. And try not to let your entire body move, right? We just want to stay tall in the spine. Let it come down, stay tall in the spine. Again, there's nothing wrong if you need to use your hands as a kickstand, but you really want to maybe challenge yourself here. Last one, good. Shake it out. Last stretch we're going to be doing. Half kneeling. So in the half kneeling position, we're going to have one leg up, the other leg down, creating like a 90 degree angle. Now, something we'll see often when people do this position is they'll stretch and they'll allow that lower back to arch. That's cool, that's, that's nice flexibility, but that's not what we're going for. We're learning how to control that range of motion. So what we're going to do is we're gonna flatten that back foot. From here, I want you to tuck your tailbone forward, right? I want you to tuck that tailbone as much as you can. So from here, tuck it up as if your hips are trying to touch the ceiling. Now I'm in that position. Now you should feel a stretch. Squeeze your butt when you're in that position. Now you really feel a stretch. Now the dynamic contractions in this position are I'm going to pull myself forward and I'm going to pull myself back as if I'm trying to knee someone in the face. That's the dynamic motion. So again, small. It's very small. It's pretty intense. It's a small range of motion. You'll notice that my hips aren't really moving as I do it. It's three. Five, squeeze, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Move into that new range of motion by squeezing the kneecap, squeezing that hand behind the kneecap. Squeeze, pull yourself into that range of motion, but notice that my hips are still tucked. I'm still squeezing. We're going to hold this new position. Squeeze. And again, dynamic contraction. Pull yourself out. Five, woo, six, seven, squeeze, eight, nine, that's one, ten. Good, pull yourself forward. Squeeze that hand behind your kneecap, pull yourself into it as if you're almost trying to lift this leg off the ground to come forward, but you're still tucking that hip forward. Woo! Deep breath. I feel a big stretch all the way up. Last one, pull a deep stretch. Pull, knee that person in the face. Keep those hips tucked. Three, two, one. Pull yourself into that new range of motion. Pull, pull, pull. Try and lift that back knee off the ground as you keep everything tucked. Good. Relax. Lower back is pretty straight right now. It's not curved up, right? It's because we've earned that range of motion. Good. And slowly come out of it. We're going to switch sides now. Woo. Bet your hip flexors never felt like that before from doing this kneeling lunge stretch, right? It's attention to detail that makes a big difference. My hips are back. I'm going to tuck my hips forward. Squeeze that butt. Squeeze, feel that stretch. We're gonna perform our dynamic contractions now. Pull. Two. It's like you're gonna knee that person in the face. Nine, last one, ten, 
Squeeze your hand behind that kneecap, pull yourself deeper as if you're trying to lift that back leg off the ground. Keep tucking that tailbone, pull, 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 pull. Whew. Hold that position. Again, dynamic contraction. that hand behind the knee pull yourself deeper squeeze that hand pull yourself deeper as if you're trying to lift that knee off the ground back leg relax into that new range of motion breathe keep tucking that tailbone you don't have to squeeze this tight but keep that tailbone tucked keep the tailbone tucked now dynamic contraction Good. Pull yourself deep into that stretch. Pull it. Keep that tailbone tucked. Pull, 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 pull. Keep that tailbone tucked. Pull. And relax into that new range of motion. Woo. Deep breath. Deep breath. Slowly come out of it. I don't know what it is about that hip flexor stretch but it always makes me break a sweat. We are almost done. We have two movements left, but why don't you grab a drink of water before we go on? My legs are exhausted right now, but what we're going to use is we are going to use the range of motion that we've gained throughout this entire class. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine two movements. The first movement is what we call the wide leg monkey. So the way you perform this movement is you're going to squat down with your legs wide apart. The heels stay in contact with the ground the entire time. While you're sitting in the squat, the arms are extended forward. I have a nice long spine. I'll then place my hands on the ground. My heels will come up as I shift the weight into my arms. And all that's going to happen is one knee is going to replace the other. I'll place that foot down. I'll shift my weight. I'm back in this wide sumo squat position or long leg, wide leg frogger, in the wide leg rocker. So from here, place the hands down. One knee's going to replace the other. It's okay if your heels have to stay up a little longer so you can get back into that position so you can walk yourself. Good, now that you're comfortable with it, or you're a little familiar with it, we're gonna place the hands down and we're going to push and pull ourselves into the next position, hop. Stay low. Hold that position, good. Place the hands down, push. One replaces the other. Stay as low as you can, really prying those hips apart, yeah? Really extend those arms so you have a nice tall spine. Last one. It's great. Now from here, after we perform that movement, we're gonna work on what we call the frog. And then another variation called the tactical frog. So for your frog, you're going to set up by taking the legs apart. Now, my feet are turned in. I don't wanna open them up too much because that can place a lot of stress on the knee, especially if you're not used to this position. I wanna drive those knees apart slightly bring the foot in. Not all the way in, slightly in. Yeah? From here, if you can be in this position, great. That might be more than enough for you. If it feels like you can keep going, you're gonna bring your forearms down to the ground. Tailbone is untucked. We're not tucking the tailbone, we want that tailbone untucked. 
The movement we are going to do for the allotted time are going to be our dynamic contractions. So what we're going to do is we're just going to rock back, pull forward. As we rock back, drive those knees into the ground, push yourself forward with that. Rock back, pull yourself forward. Pull yourself forward. And when you reach your 10th one, you're going to just drive those knees apart. As if you're trying to pick your legs up off the ground, pick your knees up off the ground and pull them apart so you get a little deeper into it. Find that comfortable position, rock it out. And then you'll rock back and forth for another set. If you get through one set, awesome. If you make it through less than one set, awesome. We're really just looking for a few dynamic contractions. You don't have to do the full 10, right? Maybe we only do five and then we move into that new range of motion. Now, if this position is comfortable for you, we can look at the tactical frogger. I'm going to be performing the tactical frogger. It's just what I like. So from here, in this position, we're going to drive our leg up on one side. The other leg stays in contact with the ground. The other heel stays in contact with the ground. And then we're going to come back, arch through that lower back. I like this movement quite a bit because it uncups the hips and it makes everything feel good. Again, take your time. Some people might want to take both feet off the ground. I want to keep one leg on the ground as a kickstand. Come forward, rock it back. Other leg off the ground, forward, rock it back. So this is the movement I'll be using. Again, if you're not comfortable in the frog yet, or let's work just on the frog. Cool, great. So we're gonna be doing 30 seconds of each movement. Get ready. Start in your squat. Are you ready? 30 seconds on the clock. Go. Pry those legs apart. Remember, it doesn't have to be fast. We're really looking more to pry the legs apart as much as we can while staying low in our squat, keeping those hips low. down, two, one, excellent. Now we're gonna get into that frogger position, right? So decide right now, are you gonna work on the frogger hold or are you gonna work on the tactical frogger? This time I'm gonna use the tactical frogger. Three, two, one, rock forward. Whatever position you're in, make sure that when you're rocking back, your hips are tilted, so your tailbone is towards the sky. Yeah, we're not really gonna tuck our hips right now. Keep those tailbones. This feels really good, especially after that wide leg monkey, right? Two, one, three. Catch your breath for a second. We're gonna go right back in to that wide leg monkey. Three, two, one, and go. What works for you? Are you able to keep your chest up the entire time? Right? Because that's a sign. We just spent all that time working on that T-spine flexibility, so that should help you actually. Load, pull across. Are you able to squat lower than you were before with those legs wide? The feet can be slightly turned out, right? They don't have to be facing forward. Turn them out, it allows you to open up the hips a little bit more. And that's it. Get ready. This round I'm gonna do the regular frogger. Stretch. Three, two, one. Dynamic contraction. I'm gonna go for five, and then I'm gonna drive those legs apart. Driving the knees in the mouth. Nice contraction, drive. Good, and drive. Try and squeeze that butt. Pick the legs up off the ground if you can. Squeeze, pull apart. Good, I'm gonna go for another set of contractions. Two, one, excellent. All right, we're almost there, we're almost there. Another round, ready? Three, two, 
one and go. Pull across. Can you make the legs even longer, right? Can you take the legs even wider apart, right? I'm gonna take them wider and see if I can really pry those legs open. Yeah, can I be wider? Can my arms still reach forward? What happens? Does it change the entire movement because my legs are now wider? I don't know, you tell me. Pull across, pull across, pull across. Good, two, one. I'm gonna go back into Frogger again, not Tactical Frogger. I'm gonna save Tactical Frogger for the last round. Here we go. So I'm driving those hips back. Driving them back. But I'm not rocking so far back that I'm creating any sort of weird pinching. Right? I'm not trying to push crazy deep. Two. One. Drive. Those knees apart, spread the ground apart, squeeze your butt. Try and lift those legs up. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Last round. Slowly get out of that position. Last round. What can we do here? How can we make it more challenging? Maybe, you know what? I'm feeling pretty tired now, so I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm just gonna stay nice and low. Gotta remember to extend those arms forward. Three, two, one. Nice work, guys. We're just on our last round. I'm gonna do Tactical Frogger. You pick whichever one you wanna do. Maybe you've been following along with me. Three, two, one. You're doing a great job, guys. Keep prying those legs apart. Keep rolling them forward. Back. And we're done. Take a second. Deep breath in. Now we're not gonna move out of this position exactly. We're gonna do some down regulation breathing just to calm things out. We're gonna find our child's pose. So we're gonna have our feet apart. We're gonna take our arms out in front and extend. And bring our head down to the ground. And all we're gonna do while we're here is we're gonna keep our mouths closed. Inhale through the nose, hold for three seconds. Two, three. Exhale through the nose, three, two, one and hold for three, two, one. And again, inhale for three, two, one and hold. Exhale for three, two, one and hold for three, two, one. And let's repeat that pattern to ourselves now. And while you're in this position, think about how you're feeling. What did you learn during this session? Stay in the position. I'm just going to get out of it to talk to you. Keep breathing. What were you able to learn today during your session? Were you able to get into a new position that you weren't able to get into at the start of the session? Do you feel looser than before? I hope you do. 
Are there not as many pops and creaks as there were before? Did you enjoy using the range of motion after you stretched? Right, that's pretty important, yeah? And another breath. You guys did a fantastic job. That was a challenging class and it was awesome to have you along with me while I went through it. So I hope you have a good rest of the day and I hope to see you back here soon.